Dr. Julie Pelche. She is chair and associate professor of the Department of Indigenous Studies at the University of Winnipeg. Dr. Pelche has a doctorate in cultural anthropology and specializes in indigenous cultures, primarily Anishinaabeg of the Great Lakes area. Her research practice includes decolonization, identity issues, and indigenous development. She is a, des a descendant of the Westgate Sipu Fish River tribe of Northern Maine. Is there a historical and or cultural bias against Aboriginal female leadership and entrepreneurship? Thank you. I'm happy to, uh, to be here and I'm happy to be addressing this question. It, it's a big question uh, and I'm an academic and that means we like to talk a lot, but I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to stay within my, within my limits and, and answer questions afterwards. And, um, and I'm so happy to follow Sheila because what she discusses really leads to what I want to talk about. And yes, there is historical and cultural bias toward women leadership and women entrepreneurship for Aboriginal women. Um, the historical bias comes from, uh, comes from basically contact contact with Europeans whose beliefs about women and their roles were extremely different from that of indigenous peoples in North America. So we have this contact that really pushes women out of leadership roles. And, and by leadership, I'm like Sheila, I'm meaning that quite broadly. This could be political leadership, it's leadership within the family, it's leadership in economic decision making. And there was a, a great diversity, and still is a great diversity, of indigenous peoples in Canada. And I, I don't like making generalizations, but one generalization that I feel confident standing behind is that women were valued equally pre-contact. I didn't say the same. I didn't say they were doing all the same things that men were, but they were doing their role the accepted role for women, and it had a great deal of influence because women usually were the primary providers of stable food sources for the communities. And so you listened to them. We even had First Nations communities uh, pre-contact um, and still do in some cases, whether the Canadian government recognizes that or not, where women choose the leaders. So the men may be the public face of the community, but they don't do things that will upset uh, a large part of their constituency, well, half of their constituency, and that's the females. So the historical bias came when Europeans arrived and their women were primarily, as diverse as they are as well, were primarily quite subjugated at that time. They couldn't own property. Um, they couldn't really make much in the way of decisions on their own. Men were responsible for them. So your father first was responsible for you, made decisions on your behalf, then your husband, and then uh, your son, right? So even a grown woman, uh, a mature woman with wisdom couldn't make uh, decisions for herself. So, so that, that very much changed with culture contact. Um, now, cultural biases, oh, and this historic relationship has affected a lot of the way that we think in our own communities today, with a lot of people thinking that this is normal, that this is standard, this is just the way it is. Well, it isn't. Um, it isn't. Uh, women have been and can continue to be leaders. Now, the... Um, the cultural bias is significant as well, and, and I've, I've written about and I'm really interested in what's called the noble savage concept. The idea that indigenous peoples are natural, that they are of nature, uh, they, they like the deer in the woods, right? Innocent, non-capitalistic, non-competitive, uh, just, you know, living like pure children. Um, and that's how we were described and are still often described by paternalistic um, others. I'll just put it that way. So this, there is a, a strong cultural bias. Now, if you happen to be an entre entrepreneurial woman or man or community and you do become financially successful, then often you're criticized for being rich Indians, 
Um, that's a term that is thrown about, especially in the United States. I do a lot of uh, American Indian casino research. And there's a great deal of concern that rich Indians, as they are known, have lost their culture. Now, nobody is concerned about Donald Trump having lost his culture. Everyone assumes that he's just fine, that Oprah Winfrey has not stopped being a black woman because she's on the Fortune 500. But indigenous peoples who become financially successful, either as individuals or as a group, are seen as somehow not authentic, not real, that they have given up something of themselves, when really what they are expressing is what they have always had, economic and financial and individual sovereignty, the right to make decisions about your own income and how you're going to earn your living. So we put up these barriers, and those barriers again become they become, um, an academic term would be reified. We have made them real, okay? So these are, are imposed concepts that become real in their outcomes. I teach um, intro students, uh, students who are take, in their first year at university, and m most of my students are Aboriginal. I asked them at the beginning of the class to anonymously answer, um, define some terms, and one of the terms is Aboriginal. What do you think of when you hear that term or read that term? And these students write terribly, terribly negative things. They don't write successful business person. They don't write university professor, even though I'm sitting there in front of them. They write substance abuse, homeless, gangs, suicide, uneducated. It's heartbreaking. Part of my mission as an educator is to break that model, is to take those reified concepts, those concepts that indigenous peoples and women cannot be X, Y, or Z and say, no, throw that out, toss that out, the barriers exist, don't get me wrong. We have policies that need to be changed in this country so that Aboriginal people, Aboriginal women can fully achieve what they want to achieve and need to achieve. But at the same time, it also starts internally. So there's external barriers and the internal barriers. Um, and I, I hope that, that we're all moving in a direction where we, can, where we can resolve some of those issues. So thank you.